How's it going YouTube? Cody Bernardi here with another YouTube video and in today's video we are going to be talking about Trace Labs. Now for those of you that are unfamiliar with what Trace Labs is, it is a missing person OSINT organization. Basically the way they work is that they host events, uh, they host CTFs, capture the flags, and basically the way it works is you have a whole crowd of people trying to find information about actual missing people. Um, I've participated in a few Trace Lab CTFs. I was actually uh, participated at the DEF CON 26 Trace Lab CTF, which I think was their second ever event. And it is a fun time. Um, and I'll be getting into, I mean, everything that I know about Trace Labs, kind of how I prep uh, tools I use and such like that. But basically, the way it works is that you get a bunch of hackers, a bunch of investigators, a bunch of nosy people trying to find evidence of people's whereabouts, missing people's whereabouts. Um, so that's what Trace Labs is. They host events. It seems about every three months. Um, and you basically try to find as much information about these missing people as possible. And what happens is once all of this information is submitted into the CTF, judges review it and all that, and they actually hand it over to law enforcement where they can take that information and then act upon it. Uh, so it's really nice uh, because you're not only helping f uh, families find some closure, but you're actually making an actionable difference in people's lives. Um, and so, yeah. So why should you do Trace Labs for, I, I mean, outside of the obvious that, you know, you're helping find missing people, you're also helping law enforcement out uh, with some of these cases. Some of these, you know, law enforcement agencies, they just don't have the resources. And apologies, like the sun is coming out. So it's probably screwing up the lighting and all that in here. I need to get a blackout curtain. Uh, you're, you're helping out some law enforcement agencies that just don't have the resources to work on some of these cases. So by doing trace labs, by these law enforcement agencies doing trace labs, they're basically crowdsourcing their intelligence gathering efforts. And it, it, it's just a win-win. You learn stuff, you help out law enforcement, you help out families and you know, there are prizes for first, second, third, and I believe some, uh, there's like a fourth place one, but it's not actual fourth place. Anyways, so it, it's a great event. I would highly encourage all of you to participate in the next Trace Labs event. So who can participate in Trace Labs? Do you need a secret clearance? Do you need to be law enforcement or anything like that? Nope. Uh, anyone can participate. Uh, it's not US based only. It's not Canada based only. It's anyone around the world. My teams consist of people from the United States, United Kingdom, Australia. I mean, the list goes on and on. So everyone can participate. They typically try to host it at a fairly neutral time. It's obviously pretty difficult to host an event that can appease everyone's needs. Uh, they go off uh, universal standard time. Um, and yeah, it's like for me, it's typically about 9 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, so you can use that as a reference at what time they usually run them at. So about 9 a.m. Pacific time. And they run between four to six hours. So you'll have four hours or six hours, depending on the event, uh, to work on these cases. So everyone could participate. I would encourage everyone to participate if you're able to. And if uh, you're unable to because of uh, monetary reasons, please reach out to me on Discord. I will more than happy pay for some people's tickets. I typically like to do that. Um, so just reach out to me directly and just let me know. Um, so what should you expect during the CTF? So, um, <clears throat> basically the way it works is, uh, the, the starting time, like I said, it's about 9am Pacific time. Uh, that first hour, you're not doing anything. They typically have a zoom call where they kind of go over what trace labs is, uh, what to look for, blah, 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 kind of what each of the uh, different points mean. So that's the first hour. So don't feel too guilty if you're like a little bit late to that. Um, I would encourage you to participate in that first hour Zoom session if you've never done Trace Labs before, because there's a, obviously coming from the horse's mouth, they'll be able to explain a lot more in depth about what Trace Labs is all about uh, than I could. So um, yeah, you'll have that about an hour window in the beginning. They just talk about all that. And then you go to the scoreboard and you have typically three to four missing people just their names and then you'll probably get like a missing persons poster and you'll have a submission link uh yeah that's pretty much it so what you should expect it's pretty straightforward and then they have a scoring system 
which I'll try to find a link or a screenshot of what each of these different categories mean. And I'll, I'll get into what I try to focus on uh, when I'm participating. So next up is tool prep. Now, you're probably all gung-ho about using all sorts of tools and such like that, which they do come in handy at some point, but I personally don't really use any tools unless I like need to for a specific use case. But overall, I'm not using any tools because these are missing people. They're not businesses. They're not anything like that where you could just go online, you know, use Photon or, you know, whatever, uh, you know, automate automation script or automation tool out there, uh, you know, on a person. So I tend to focus on manual analysis going on Facebook, going on Instagram, going on Snapchat, going on TikTok, going on VK and all that. And I'm going and searching their profile for different clues. Now there's, like I said, there's different points. You, you could get points for a family. If you're able to associate a mother, if you're able to associate a father, a cousin, brother, sister, if you're able to make that connection. And when you submit uh, flags, you'll have the opportunity to share the link of how you, uh, you know, the the flag, I guess. So if it's, let's say it's their mother, you share the link to their Facebook, like this is their mother. Um, and then you explain like, all right, this is the missing person's mother. And then you explain how, you know, it's the missing person's mother. So you explain like, I was able to go onto the missing person's Facebook page, click on about, click on family and friends and all that. And then it says mother listed on their page. You explain that out, you submit it, and then your judge will give you points if, if it's a valid flag. So that's kind of how it works. So I, I'll go through, knock out all the family members, not literally, but <laughs> I'll go through and I'll get all the family members, so mother, father, brother, all that, cousins. Um, then from there, I'll go to friends. And typically what I would do is go to the friends list. If the friends list is not available, any photos they have, any reactions they have on their photos, um, or any comments on any, any of their public facing photos, I'd go there. There's other points for like interests they have, different social media accounts and all that. So um, I'll get into all that in a bit. So um, I would say a good tip for you, especially as a noob uh, doing Trace Labs, is to scut study the different, um, the, the score, the, the different points you can get. Um, because when I first did my first CTF, I wouldn't submit certain items because I felt like it wasn't valuable Intel. That's just my assumption. I, I mean, like I said, you're helping out law enforcement agencies that might not have anyone working on their case. So you could be the sole person building out this missing person's case. So anything you can find, I, I submit and I try to submit often because you have a, a person judging your or, or your submission. So uh, I'll get into that in a bit. So anything that could match any of the scores, anything that can award you points, I submit. Uh, brother, sisters, I submit. Family, I submit. Friends, I submit. Cars, anything like that that's associated with that person, I submit. Even their phones. Like if, like if, if they're taking a, a, a mirror selfie and they're holding up their phone, I mean, I'll let you guys be the judge. If I was taking this photo, this is advanced information about the person. What would you take from a photo like this? So I'll move out of the way. What is some information you can gather about this particular still? Well, I have an iPhone. Uh, I have an iPhone that you could probably Google. I'll let you judge what kind of iPhone this is. Um, in the background, it's potential hobbies. It says DEF CON. If you were to look up DEF CON, you might be able to find some information. Um, you might be able to pull some of these badges if you can read it. I don't know if you can. One says SEMA, so I might have an automotive interest. Uh, and just like little things like that. So I analyze photos and I try to pick out clues. Um, like this most recent CTF, I'm not going to mention who it is because that's another thing you should not do is talk about the specific missing persons or anything like that in these Trace Labs events because they are missing. They could be kidnapped. And if, you know, their captor gets wind of anything, uh, ongoing investigation can be really bad. So don't talk about specific people, but I will give examples of what I saw. So one of the missing persons I worked on, they had, I think like 10 different Facebook accounts. So that was, again, those were all points themselves. And then in one of their accounts, they linked to a YouTube channel and going to the YouTube channel, they had a bunch of like gameplay, a lot of call of duty gameplay. 
So I was able to make the connection based on the amount of uploads they had about this specific game that they had an interest in this game. And I submitted that and I got, I think it was advanced points, like a hobby of theirs. So like minor things like that. And going on YouTube channels, that is another thing that, again, like a tool does not help you out with. I watch the videos at like two times speed. So I get through the video quickly, but I'm not missing anything. And they'll talk about something. So like one person, they really like detailing cars. I would have never gotten that from their Facebook or anything like that. But they were talking about, I got to go to work. Uh, and then they eventually got to like detailing cars. Like you would have, you would not, not have gotten that from a tool. You might have eventually gotten it on like a social media page, but just little things like that. Like I, I do 99% manual analysis. That's what you're going to have to do, especially with missing people. Now, the few times I actually do use tools is uh, there was a missing person. They had a website and I used a histor I forgot the tool is. I'll try to dig it up. A historical who is record. And I used that tool to pull up the who is record of their expired website. And I got their address information and their contact information and their email and all that. And they were listed missing in one state, but this who is record listed them in a completely different state. So that not only gives you points just from that record itself, like their address, their email, their phone number, but you can pivot to start searching in this other town. So I don't know. It, 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 it's, it's a lot of manual analysis. I'm, I'm just going to get that out of the way. I don't really use too many tools. Uh, the only tool I would use um, is probably Maltego, but that's to graph anything out. But they Trace Labs doesn't require Maltego uploads or anything like that. You can use it as like a mind map, but you don't really need to really use it for really anything. Um, and yeah, so like I said earlier, submit frequently because the judges are people. So you're going to be assigned one judge and they're going to be available on Discord. So I've had to, in the past, reach out to my judge. Be like, hey, FYI, you denied this, but here's a reason why it shouldn't be denied based on the rules, and they fixed it for me. So I tend to submit frequently. Um, now, when the time stops and the, th the four or six hour stops, they're going to score all your points regardless, but I still like to submit frequently just because I'm in, you know, I, I find something, I want to make sure I don't forget it. So it's easy to take a screenshot or whatever, upload it right away. That takes like a couple seconds. You get it out there. You don't have to worry about it. And then you keep going. So that's kind of my flow. Some people like to take notes. So like Evernote or OneNote or anything like that, Google Drive, um, you can use that. Um, so I submit frequently, but that's the way I work. Um, now, as far as teams go, so you can allow, uh, Trace Labs allows up to four people on a team. And the way that I kind of uh, structure my teams when I run it is we'll have one party leader and then you'll divide people up uh against you know however, however many missing people you have and by the way everyone is everyone that is participating in the ctf is searching for info about the same people by the way so i confirm that with my judge so everyone has the same missing people so it's a fair fair playing field people don't have an advantage because their missing person is active on tiktok or whatever everyone's looking for the same thing so i i divide the way I run it is we'll have four people and four missing people. So um, we'll just divide one person to one person. And then you initially start searching for info about those people. Now, the way I like to run things is if you are getting swamped with the amount of information you're having to submit, you ping your team chat on Discord, which I would highly recommend you set up a team chat. Like, hey, I need some help over here. If anyone is struggling with their person, I could use some help and just that constant flow of communication going back and forth like, hey, I need help is vital. And another thing that I would recommend is every hour you just have a team sync on voice chat. That's the way I like to run, um, you know, first hour, like ask how everyone's doing, you know, you know, just get a status update from them. Um, and then you can kind of wean that off as you need. But I like to get a, an update from everyone every hour or every 90 minutes. Um so yeah, and then preparing, and I should have put this at the beginning, but preparing for your first Trace Labs, I'll put some links down below. Jake Kreps, a well-known OSINT figure. If you don't follow him on Twitter, I would highly encourage you that you do. 
Um, I don't think he's posting a write-up about this latest Trace Labs event because I think he broke his hand. Um, but I would encourage you to read write-ups uh, about just people's experiences doing these CTFs. It, I mean, it, it might seem daunting initially, uh, but they're pretty fun. Uh, I will say you'll come across some really sad cases. Like, th these are missing people. Um, you'll get people that have been kidnapped. You get people that are being trafficked. You get runaway sometimes. Like, I remember a case that was like some teenage kid that ran away seven times in the past. Like... So you'll get things like that, um, but it's it's all over the place. So I would encourage you to read write-ups. Um, there's different techniques on how you can handle certain things. Um, I, I mean, it's hard to guess what you will experience in the future um, as far as what you'll see. Some things you, you might come across some... Yeah, so I would encourage you to read write-ups and definitely... Um, seek out like mental counsel if you need to especially afterwards i think they do mention like some people you could chat with after the ctf is over because you do come across them sometimes um and then the last thing that i would encourage you to do is just add your judge on discord so you can have that communication with them um but yeah i mean outside of that that's pretty much what you should expect during a trace lab ctf it's pretty cut and dry what you're doing it's really fun. You test out some skills, uh, some investigative skills that you normally want to get in a traditional CTF. This is, you know, impactful real life sh and this is what investigators, you know, deal with. Like you're, you're basically an investigator for a couple hours. So, um, it's, it's a fun time. I would encourage everyone to do it. And like I said, if you, if the $20 is a blocker for you, uh, for participating in the next Trace Labs, just reach out to me, Arco, on uh, on Discord. So, yeah, that's it for this video. If y'all enjoy content like this, please hit the thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe button with the bell notification enabled so you can get notified anytime I post a new video, which I just surpassed 9,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is that's way too much. I, I never thought I would get that high. Uh, I, I did promise at 10,000, I'd pay for someone's OSCP. So it's going to be random. Make sure you join my discord. Cause that's where the giveaway is going to be. And I'm going to make sure that whoever wins the OSCP is actually going to use it. It's not going to be random. You're going to have to write a whole essay on why you deserve a chance at the OSCP. Um, so anyways, that's it for this video. Y'all take care. Goodbye.